The SPF Income Report, a unique look behind the scenes of a best-selling indie author's advertising spend and revenue. Revealing the figures, your host, Mark Dawson. Hi there, it's Mark here from the SPF Podcast and welcome to this August Income Report, August 2017. If you've been with the podcast all the way from the start, you'll know that around about 18 months ago, as we released the first um, iteration of our Ads for Authors course, or our Facebook Ads for Authors as it was back then, I did a series of income reports. And what those were, were not total income for book sales, not really looking at organic sales, but looking at the amount of, uh, of money that I was generating through ads, specifically through uh, the ads that I was running on Facebook. So I'd look at things like uh, the, the monthly ad spend, revenue, affiliate income, all of that kind of stuff, and then put it together in a monthly report that um, you guys could look at. You could uh, see if you can pick out some hints and tips that would enable you to run your own ads more effectively. And I thought as we get closer to the November 2017 relaunch of um, Ads for Authors as it is now, given that it's uh, much bigger than just Facebook ads, I thought I'd do that again. And I thought we'd look at uh, three or maybe four months worth of uh, data and a good place to start would be August, uh, given that I'm recording this right now on the 4th of September. Uh, I've got a full month's worth of uh, data that I can go through and also hopefully to give you a little bit of um, information that will enable you to run your ads more effectively. So it won't take too long. I'm going to run through uh, the, the main ad venues that I'm looking at at the moment, and those are fairly obviously Facebook, I'm also looking at BookBub's CPM ads, uh, not the feature deals, the ads that appear at the bottom of the uh, daily emails, and also looking at Amazon Marketing Service or AMS ads. And then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll pull those together and see if we can uh, share any tips that will enable you to, uh, to, to go away and, and run your own ads more effectively. So before I jump into Facebook, I just want to um, give you a little bit of an understanding as to how I calculate this information. When I did these income reports before, and indeed until quite recently, when I look at the, uh, the revenue generated by my advertising, I've only ever looked at sales of the thing that I'm trying to sell. So for example, if I'm selling a box set uh, that costs $6.99, um, I know that my royalty at 70% is around about $4.80. And that would be the amount that I looked at when I'm calculating the return on the ad spend. But the more I looked into this um, and the more I've spoken to other authors, um, I realized this is kind of um, English pessimism coming through and it's not really a realistic look at how much those ads are actually generating. The thing that I am missing in that calculation is read through. What do I mean by read through? Well, if I um, sell book one in my series and I know that I've got another nine or 10 books behind it, as I do in my John Milton series, I know that um, data and uh, just anecdotal evidence from emails from readers suggests that they will buy much more than just the first book. If they get through it and they read it, um, then there's a good chance they'll go into to book two or book three, book four. Or if uh, they bought a box set, they'll buy the second box set or the third box set. And I've never, ever looked at that bigger revenue picture. And I think that's a bit misleading and it's a bit unrealistic because at the end of the day, as I say, readers will buy more if they like what they've just read. So if we assume, therefore, that we can include a little bit more in uh, the, the data when we're looking at uh, revenue, then we need to think about how we can assess how much more we should be attributing to the sale of the first book in the series or the first box set or whatever it might be. Now, this kind of gets to the, the main reason I've had problems with read through before. Um, as you'll know, if you've been following me for a while, I like to be uh, as specific and accurate as I can. And read through is annoyingly unscientific. It's very difficult to uh, to track precisely how many books someone will buy if they've bought the first book in the series. There are a number of ways to do it. Um, and the three that I'm, I've looked at and I'm continuing to look at are as follows. The first way to do it is to look at the, the raw sales numbers. So if you um, have, let's say you've got five books in your series, you look at how many of the first book in the series that you've sold, and that's easy to find out from all of the retail platforms, 
And then you find the, the book at the end of the series and you divide the book at the end by the book at the start and that gives you a percentage. You then apply that percentage, uh, so perhaps it's uh, 100 people by the, by the first book and 10 people by the last book. You know therefore that 10% um, of, of people have gone through to the end. You then apply that 10% to the value of the books that make up the series and that gives you a rough and ready read through number or a number that you can attribute uh, that you think people might actually go through when they're buying through the series and, and the number that you can assign to the first book in the series when you're calculating this kind of ad revenue. Now, of course, it is unscientific. The problem with that is pretty obvious. Uh, lots of times people will jump in in book three in the series, perhaps. If, uh, like me, you've got uh, 12 books in the series, then you probably had book bubs, uh, book six and book eight, book nine, whatever it is. And that will, will make it slightly more difficult to understand that those, uh, those numbers are accurate. What I've done is to go through all of my data and strip out promotion. So I know when I've had book bubs on the, on the various uh, books in the series, and I've taken those out and tried to flatten that data down. So that's, uh, that's the first way you can look at read through. Uh, the second way is to sur survey your readers. Now I do that every year, around about Christmas time. And I know um, from uh, six or 7,000 returns I had last time, that the kind of average read through for people who are, are reading my books is between six and seven books. Now that's slightly skewed because those people on my mailing list um, are particular, particular fans of mine and that doesn't necessarily um, relate to the whole of the mailing list or the whole of uh, people who've bought my books. But it's another indication that you can look at uh, more than just that, that first book that you're advertising. Now, the third and the final way is to ask for retailer assistance to work that out. Um, now, I've been um, working with uh, Mark at Kobo and his data team, and they've provided me with some really, really useful information that enables me to work out um, how many, in fact, it doesn't enable me to work out, it makes it really, really obvious how many people have actually bought the book and then opened the book. And then what's more, how many people have actually gone through and finished the book. And that's really, really useful information. Apart from anything else, it, it enables me to work out which of my books I need to uh, concentrate on because people are, uh, aren't finishing. Um, but it also gives me an idea and enables me to calibrate my calculations a bit more so that I can see how many books people may have actually bought after buying the first or the second book in the series. Now, Kobo are going to, um, they're looking at it at the moment to try and give me a really accurate figure so that they can, they obviously know that if, um, let's say, Reader X um, buys book one, how many books Reader X then goes on to buy. And once we look at those kinds of really focused calculations, those really focused examples, I'll have a much better idea, at least on Kobo, as to how how deep into the series readers go. And I'll provide you with more information on that when uh, Mark and the team get back to me, because that's obviously a slightly more complicated assessment for them to make. Um, but again, uh, just a, a great example of how great the guys at Kobo are, and um, Mark especially, to be able to provide me with that kind of useful information. Okay, so using all of those three methods, when I have been looking at read through, I've made calculations uh, on two distinct bases. The first one is the kind of the English basis, the pessimist in me, um, and that is the least aggressive read through calculation. So it tends to be um, the the minimum that I think people will have gone through, given that I've been looking at all of this information. And then on the other hand, we've got a slightly more optimistic read through rate, which uh, is a little bit more, well, optimistic, a little bit more aggressive, but still um, only because I am, I am English, let's be honest, I am naturally quite pessimistic and cautious. And even though I've got 12 books in the Milton series, I'm only looking at the first five books. Um, so I only work this out on the basis of five books in the series. Now, of course, if people get to book five, there's a very, very good chance, and I know this from uh, correspondence with readers, that they'll then go on to read all of the books in the series. And then they'll go on to read my Isabella Rose and my Beatrix Rose books and my Soho books. 25 books in all. So these figures are pretty cautious. Um, and um, for a number of reasons, I think I'm, I'm undercutting myself, but I want to be really careful with this kind of information. So when you have that read through percentage, you can then apply it to the value of your series and work out what the first book is worth. And for me, that means on the pessimistic basis, each sale of book one, so each sale of The Cleaner, um, makes me $6.94. And that is with that book on sale at the moment at 99 cents. 
And then on the optimistic reading, um, and bear in mind, of course, this is still not as optimistic. In fact, it's nowhere near as optimistic as I could be. Um, on that optimistic reading, each sale of book one makes me $13.93. So with that all uh, taken uh, into account and bearing that in mind, let's look at the, uh, the three main ad platforms that I have been uh, working on in the last month. So let's get started with Facebook. That's what I'm best known for and, and the platform I've got most experience on. So I've been advertising at the cleaner on a month long deal at 99 pence in the UK only. In fact, no, it's in the in the US as well, but we're just focusing on the uh, UK for this, this example. Um, so 99 pence, which means that I'm getting a 35% royalty from Amazon, which means that every time I sell one, I'm getting uh, 35 uh, pence back. Now, I have spent in the UK in August on this one campaign $4,678, and that's generated 961 sales. Now, on the um, the straight basis, so the, the amount I am very confident that has been generated, and that is looking just at sales of that particular book that I'm tracking. That has brought in $336.35. Now that, um, looking at the return on investment there, is a loss of 65%, which you might think is very, very disappointing. And of course, you would be right. I'm not in the business of losing 65% of my investment every month. But let's move on and look at those um, what the return on investment looks like when we factor in the actual read through. So if we work on the pessimistic basis, um, so the kind of the, the less aggressive calculation of read through, that has led to uh, revenue generated by those ads of $7,063. And on the optimistic basis, it's led to uh, revenue of $13,953. And the, uh, the pessimistic um, return on investment is 51%. So in other words, I've spent 4,678 and I have made 7,063. And the optimistic read through is uh, $13,953 generated. And that's uh, a, a very, a very reasonable return on investment of 198%. Pretty good. And then just looking at over at the US, I've also been running this campaign on the, in the US and I've spent $905 on the campaign over there. That's generated 224 sales and the return on investment on the straight basis. So just the uh, sale of that book, it's a 91% loss. The pessimistic uh, interpretation uh, using that pessimistic read through has uh, brought a uh, return on investment of 72%. So uh, in other words, spent 905, made 1,554. And then on the optimistic basis, that has generated profits of $3,120.32, which is a, a return on investment of 245%. Moving on, let's look at BookBub. So BookBub is, um, uh, well, we know all know BookBub. It's a great, great company, fantastic feature deals that will just completely add rocket fuel to your sales. BookBub also do what they call CPM ads. So these are the ads that appear at the bottom of their daily emails. You can bid for these. You don't need um, to be approved to get um, them in the same way that you do for a featured deal. It is basically just an auction. The um, author who bids the most will um, have placement at the bottom of the email. Now, I've only really recently been getting back into BookBub ads and I don't have, um, I haven't been doing this for the whole of August. Um, and really, really exciting news. I've had a, a several long conversations with Adam Croft, who is uh, one of our best known students for the Ads for Authors course. Adam has been spending a lot of time on these BookBub ads and has had a lot of success. And I'm pleased to say that Adam will be doing a module on BookBub ads for uh, the, the new Ads for Authors course in November. But um, in order so that I am um, completely over that before we get into uh, the run up to the launch of the course, I've been running these ads as well. Um, and instead of the uh, the cleaner, I've been advertising the uh, the box at the first three books in the Milton series, uh, which retail at six dollars and ninety nine pence. Sorry, cents even. And this has been pretty good too. And one of the benefits of these BookBub ads is that it gives you really cheap clicks and a really excellent way to get uh, your books put before 
readers on different retail platforms. So not necessarily looking at Amazon for these. You're also looking at Google, at Kobo, at Barnes & Noble, um, and of course at Apple. And I've found that these have been really, really effective at generating sales on those platforms too, which is something that Facebook is not necessarily always the best in the world at doing. So with that being said, um, I've spent um, on these ads for, I, I guess, about 10 days I'm looking at here. Um, around about $243. And that's generated um, nearly 59,000 impressions. In other words, that ad has been shown around about 60,000 times. We've had 991 clicks um, and a click-through rate. So you're dividing the, the clicks by the impressions of 2%, which is, isn't too bad. And that's generated a touch under 40 sales of the box set. So that is pretty encouraging. Now, the um, numbers generated by those um, 49, sorry, those 39, 40 sales, um, I'm making $4.89 per sale on the straight basis. So just looking at the royalty with no read through taken into account, that's made $193. Um, now that's a straight loss of 21%. So the return on investment there, 21% loss, but not looking at read through. When we add in read through, so we're looking at uh, the pessimistic read through first of all. Um, on the box set, that calculates out at um, instead of 4.89 per sale, eight dollars and three cents per sale. That means that I've made $318 or a return on investment of 31%. And then if we look at the optimistic calculation, which comes in at around about $13 per sale of the first one in the series, that brings in $529 or um, an optimistic return on investment of 117%. So pretty good. Okay, let's look finally at um, AMS. So the um, Amazon Marketing Services ad platform. I don't have as much detail on this because the uh, the dashboard that AMS provides us with is, how shall I say this diplomatically, not the best in the world. Um, it's quite difficult to work out exactly what the numbers are. But I do know that in the month of August, I spent $971 and I made uh, $1,486. Now that is not taken into account any read through at all because it's very difficult to know um, which of those um, those sales is of the box set, is of the first in series, second in series. It's really difficult to work out exactly what that is. So I'm being really, really ultra cautious on this. Um, but that means that even on the straight basis, so only looking at sales I know are um, related to the ad, it means that I've made a return on investment in the month of August of 53%. So in other words, I've um, spent just shy of 1,000, but I've made just shy of 1,500. Okay, so let's have a quick look at some general points that you, you can take away from um, the campaigns that I've been running in August. I also want to make sure when I'm doing this kind of stuff that I keep an eye on the rankings just to give me another point of reference to make sure that um, my numbers are robust. And I can tell you um, that when I started this in the UK, when I started the campaign on the cleaner in the, the UK, the 99 pence um, campaign, the ranking for the cleaner was 1,195. It's now 227. So that's a climb of 968 places. And it's been very sticky around about that 200 um, overall ranking uh, almost for the whole of the month. And all of the other books, so the, the, the next uh, four in the series and indeed the box set have also climbed. So the second one in the series was, was 8,531. That's now 2,294. The third was 9,000, it's now 2,700. The uh, the fourth was 15,000, it's now 7,000, etc., etc. So those books are all increasing, usually doubling their rank, or you're going up significantly um, over the course of the month. And those are full price books, so they're they're either 349 or 399, and they are they're generating excellent profits. And profits have been up significantly in the UK in August, and that can only be attributed to the ads that I'm running because there's no other reason um, for it. I'm also looking to uh, look at the increase in sales on the other vendors through the BookBub ads that I've been running. I haven't had a chance to uh, do the data analysis that I need to look at, um, and I'll only be able to do that when I've got the, the final month's numbers from those platforms, and then I'll be able to compare that with previous performance. Okay, so let's put everything together. Let's look at uh, conflating the spend and the revenue and working out exactly how I've done over the course of August. So. I have spent on all of those three ad platforms 
the grand total of $6,797.89 in August. And if we look at the revenue generated on the straight basis, so once again, not including read through, that has made $2,094 or a 69% loss in terms of the return on investment. On the pessimistic reading, so the less, the, the least aggressive read through analysis, that has made $10,421.87. So that is a 53% return on investment pretty good you have to um, accept that's a pretty decent return and then on the optimistic basis so still not as as probably not as realistic as it actually is but about as optimistic as i'm prepared to be that has generated a re revenue of nineteen thousand and eighty eight dollars and fifty one cents or a very healthy return on investment of 181 percent so one final thing um the last time i did these uh, these revenue reports these income reports a few listeners um, got in touch and said, look, it's crazy. You Not everyone can afford to spend that much on ads. And I completely get that. Um, and I certainly couldn't when I was starting out doing this. But the, these lessons will scale. It doesn't matter if you spend $10 or $20. Once you've got into the, the once you've got the learning and you understand how these platforms work, um, maybe, you know, you, you get a 53% return and you, you spend 20 and you make 30. Or you, you spend 100 and you make 150 or 200 you can start to scale these. And even when you get up to this slightly higher level, and I'm sure there are, I'm not sure, I know there are there are lots and lots of other authors spending much more than me on, on these ads. When you get up to that kind of level, you can scale those returns up to the kinds of levels that I've shown you here. And indeed, there'll be authors who are doing even better than this. So I hope that was useful. Um, it's, it's always good for me to look back over the course of the month and try and identify what's worked, what hasn't worked, how I can make improvements, how I can tweak things to, to get things running even more effectively. But I'm going to continue to do that over the course of September. And I'll be back in early October with the second of these uh, occasional income reports. But in the meantime, um, have a great month of book sales. I hope that was useful. Please feel free to drop me a line at mark at selfpublishingformula.com if you'd like to ask me any questions. And I'll see you uh, next week on Friday for the regular podcast and I'll be back again with one of these reports um, at the end of the month. Until then, bye-bye. The SPF Income Report, part of the Self-Publishing Formula podcast. Visit us at selfpublishingformula.com for all our podcasts, show notes, links and a free step-by-step -step course on how to use Facebook ads to build your own revenue-earning mailing list. There's never been a better time to be a writer.